everybody. It's Thursday and I'm planning to make a quick video showing a table topper that is a versatile and easy way to decorate your tables for various garden parties, family dinners, those types of things. And then just go ahead and throw your table topper into the laundry uh, just like a napkin. It's basically the same as my napkin video, which was very flawed. It was my eighth video, and um, the music was too loud. Many people have told me, and uh, you know, I I feel for those people that um, have had a hard time uh, seeing or hearing. I'm going to use fabric that's pre-washed that I uh, bought to make napkins out of and so I washed it and I can tell by the way it looks that it's so wrinkled um, that I did wash it back and I remember doing it even back when I was making a lot of napkins and so I'm going to press this fabric really well on the square end and then I'm going to cut out uh, my table topper and it can be any size you just need to add two and a half inches for your hems because we're going to do a turned hem that's about five eighths on each side so you turn it once twice and then you turn the other side once twice and simple math will tell you 20 eighths works out to two and a half inches my iron is still nice and hot you can see that it's steaming and to do this we could work on from the back side and this across right here is 5 8 and then from here down to this line is also 5 8 and you can use something like that but I've done this so much that I just eyeball it but you want to keep kind of consistent and so what you do is you just fold over and you press. You turn this clockwise and then do the next one right over top. You just, this is up, still folded. You see that? Still folded. And then you just fold right over the top and press your next one. And if you can go about halfway, then you should only have to move the fabric over once to go the whole hem on this side. And so, of course, move clockwise again, turn the fabric, rotate the fabric in a clockwise direction. Some people have disliked this hem being so big, which is fine. I've been in, in Montana, I don't know, you know, I don't travel the country extensively. Uh, but I've been in nice restaurants, the places I have been, where they have a wide hem on a dinner napkin. And also on a tablecloth. And so I think it's appropriate for what we're making today, which is a table topper. When I get down to this last corner, I'm going to open this up all the way don't burn your fingers and iron in this side and then I'll do one last turn and I'll put these back where they started and so I'll fold this back down on its original fold and press that in place. Okay, let's see if I'm close. I may be a smidge big, but I'm pretty close. So we're gonna look at uh, the grain of the fabric. Fabric has a warp and a weft, and one stretches more than the other. It's the weft that has the stretch. So here, this is very stretchy, you see, and I'm not doing the edge because that's that will distort my hem and well, that's what I'm trying to avoid. So I try here. If I go over to here 
and go this way. Okay, see how see how that really is not stretching. I can get it if I go diagonally, it always stretches. I've got this pinned here to hold it in the board and be like my sewing machine needle. And this one to remind me that I'm going to start on this side rather than on the adjacent side. And I'm going to use this foot, which it's my number five Bernina uh, blind hem foot that I always call an edger. And I'll show a close up of that. And so this has this metal guide and it rides along here and then I can just stitch right along this edge and it makes for a really clean operation. Before we get too close, we're going to be within, you know, four, five, six inches somewhere here. Don't get down to here, it'll be too hard. Okay, and we're going to stop with our needle down and in the fabric, even if you have to crank it down like I do on my machine, and then we're going to fold this back all the way out and we're going to turn this where this is going to be the actual corner of the napkin. We're going to turn that so it makes a 45 degree angle and then we're going to put the hem back where it goes and that makes that big wide V and then we're going to flip it over and we're going to position it like this. And if you go a little bit shy of your hem it will probably the layers will fit better especially if you're using a very thick say a thick linen or something. And then when you come to stitch, you're going to stitch with your foot all the way down here and then one stitch onto that fabric. And then you're going to turn the piece and you're going to come across here and when you get to the bottom you're going to do the next corner the same way. Okay. And I've got white thread because I actually want to be able to use this. And the first thing we want to do is test, test our tensions. So uh, I've got my needle kicked over one so that it'll go with that guide coming across here. It'll just go right on this edge. And I'm going to hold my thread tails to start. Okay, I'm going to back stitch and then just go around. That guide is just keeping me on the straight and narrow. See how nicely it's doing this nice wide 5 8 inch hem? Okay, so here's where this is. Uh, it starts like that, but we, we want to angle the miter here. And so we fold it out, we fold it back, so that this is the actual corner of the napkin and then we get that flat and we fold that in and we fold it back. And see how I'm a little bit off? I have to sometimes do it more than once. And as I said before, you get really good at this. I like the way that looks, so I'm gonna stitch it. Here I am, I'm going to go one stitch past that corner. And you have to kind of, mine's a little loose so it hops right up there. If this were a brand new tight foot, I might have to actually lift it. When I, when I got to that edge, I might have had to kind of lift that. Don't use your finger. And I prefer you don't even use metal. Use a piece of wood. That's what clothespins are for now. And then we're going to stitch. Okay, then because I'm one stitch onto this hem instead of this one, because I'm one stitch onto this other side, when I come down I'm going to just be right in the right position. And I'm just going to now stitch all this and hope I'm just going to now stitch all this and hope that you guys can see enough that it's easy to make this. So I've drawn a line where the first fold folds over and it's purple. Can you see that? I've drawn one line there 
and I've drawn another line right there and so we just fold like that. We fold the edge, the bottom edge, up to be even with the hem, maybe just a little sixteenth of an inch push back. And then that gets folded back and then that gets folded into place. And like I say, you just get used to doing it so that you like the way it looks. And it's really not a thing where you're carefully not putting your fingers on it or in front of it. Your fingers are all over it and your fingers get used to shaping this so it's your nice 5 8 and then you're really creasing this down and pulling this out flat the way you want it and manipulating this over and back as you go. And so it gets very fast. It's only, it's, it's only a struggle because I'm trying so hard to show you how to do it and not just show you how I do it. I made a bunch of these from my dad's uh, memorial. Oh, must be going on five, more than five years, maybe going on six years now. We had lots of time to prepare what really was more of a celebration of his life than a funeral. And it was Hawaiian themed. And I had a lot of Asian fabrics that I just bought on clearance. And one of the fabrics I meant to make my dad a, a kind of a Hawaiian shirt, really, with sort of a Japanese pattern. But um, I had never gotten around to it. And so I made one of the table toppers out of that fabric. And I must have had close to a dozen fabrics. We also had hula dancers and music. And these we put on the tables at the church for the sort of reception afterwards. And then we took them down to a restaurant where we had their banquet space. My more distant relatives that had flown or driven uh, for the service, I let them take one of these toppers. And so I still have four or five myself. I saw my mom's the other day because I'm packing her stuff and hers is in pristine condition and it's one of the best ones because it is a fabric, a beautiful Asian fabric with uh, koi and um, some beautiful metallic 